Okay, so now we're going to be learning about absolute value inequalities, which um, we've done absolute value equations, so this isn't super new to you. But it has to, it does relate to compound inequalities because we might be setting up two inequalities at some point. Um, but we are going to start off uh, solving absolute value inequalities exactly how we solve absolute value equations. We need to isolate the absolute values. So in number one, I'm first going to start off by adding three both sides. Then I wind up with x, or the absolute value of x plus 1, which is less than or equal to a 0. Now this one's tricky. The absolute value of something will always be a positive number. So are there any positive numbers that are less than 0? No. But the absolute value of this could be zero. And so we could wind up with zero is equal to zero, but we cannot wind up with the absolute value being less than zero. So we're actually just going to have one solution here. We want to find out what the absolute value of x plus one is when it equals zero, when, at, when x plus one equals zero. So now I'm going to solve for x here and I wind up with the only possible value being for this one, x is equal to negative one. Because again, if x was negative one, I get a negative one plus a one, which is a zero, and the absolute value of zero equals zero. But again, I cannot have the absolute value of anything being less than zero, so I only need to satisfy that the absolute value of x plus one equals zero, and I wind up with x is equal to negative one. So to graph this on the number line, all we do is we put a closed circle at negative 1. That's my solution. There is no shading to do because that's my only solution. All right, that was probably the more tricky one that we're going to do. Number 2, I'm going to start off by adding 4 to both sides. And I wind up with 2 times the absolute, absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 6. I'm now going to divide by 2 on both sides. So I wind up with the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Now I can have the absolute value of something be greater than 3 because uh, of any, there are many positive numbers that are greater than 3. And I could have the absolute value of x minus 1 be equal to 3 because um, 3 is a positive number and the absolute value of something can be a positive number. So in this situation then, we are going to create two inequalities. My first inequality, I drop my absolute values. I rewrite my inequality. My second inequality, I drop my absolute values. Listen carefully, I flip my inequality symbol around and I make it a negative 3. We need to flip because I'm making the one side negative so it's kind of like dividing by a negative number here. Solving my green inequality, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I wind up with x is greater than or equal to 4. Solving my blue inequality, I wind up with x is less than or equal to negative 2. Now we need to figure out if this is an and or or compound inequality answer. So how we do that is we graph. So I have two, three, four. I'm just going to do a rough sketch of the graph. I'm not filling out the whole number line. I would have a closed circle at four, and I want x is greater than four, so I'm going to shade this way. And I'm going to have a closed circle at negative. Oh, sorry, that's a negative two. I apologize. So not at two. I got to keep going on my number line. I'm going to have a closed circle at negative two. And I'm going to shade this way according to the inequality. So since the shadings are going in opposite directions, that means that there would be an or in between the two solutions. This is an or on inequality. All right, looking at number three. Number three, we have the absolute value of x minus four being greater than or equal to zero. Well, no matter what, this number can be any positive number in the world, but also the number that we get here could be zero. If x was four, we would get this side, this left side to be zero. So 
our choices are that that absolute value could be positive or it could be zero, it cannot be negative. Well, how many positive numbers are there that are greater than zero? All of them. And how many, uh, and zero, because of this equal to sign, is equal to zero. So this means that no matter what we put in for x, we will get a true statement. So our answer for this one would be all real numbers. So we just shade the whole number line. All right, moving on to number four. I am subtracting the four from both sides. I wind up with the absolute value of 2x minus a 1, which is less than 0. This number is going to be a positive number. Are there any positive numbers that are less than 0? No. So this is no solution. I do not graph. All right. Looking at number 5, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I have that absolute value of 3x plus 4, which is less than or equal to a negative 2. This left side would yield a positive number. Are there any positive numbers that are less than or equal to negative 2? Nope. So this is also no solution. When dealing with absolute value inequalities, you need to kind of use your knowledge and common sense and talk your way through the problem in order to determine if it's all real numbers or no solution, or if your answer comes out to something funky like in number one. All right, so number six, I'm gonna subtract six from both sides. I wind up with the absolute value of x minus six, which is greater than or equal to negative 10. This left side would yield a positive number. How many positive numbers are greater than or equal to negative 10? All of them are. So your answer would be all real numbers. Every positive number is greater than negative 10. So that's why we got all real numbers here. All right, so now moving on to number seven. My absolute values are isolated. This left side is a positive number. A positive number, are there any positive numbers that are less than eight? Yeah, there are. There's seven, six, five, four, three. Um, now, all, are all the positive numbers less than eight? No. So, your answer is not no solution or all real numbers here. Instead, we are going to be uh, creating two inequalities like we did back up in number two. So, my first inequality, I just drop my absolute values, rewrite my inequality. My second inequality, I drop my absolute values, I split my inequality symbol, and make this a negative 8. I'm now going to subtract 2 from both sides here to get a negative x is less than a 6. Dividing by negative 1 on both sides, when I divide by a negative number in an inequality, my inequality symbol flips. So same thing in my blue inequality, subtracting 2 from both sides, I wind up with this. Dividing by negative 1 on both sides, I flip my inequality symbol and wind up with this. Graphing, most likely I'm going to have to go back to use. Okay, so graphing. I have an open circle at negative 6, an open circle at 10. I'm graphing x must be greater than negative 6, but also less than 10. Since your two shaded regions intersect, this is an and inequality. So your solution actually is x must be greater than negative 6, but less than 10. That's your answer. All right. Looking at number 8, I'm going to first start off by dividing by 3 on both sides. So I wind up with the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is less than or equal to 3. This left side would give you a positive number. Are there any positive numbers that are less than or equal to 3? Yes, 3. 
two, one, and so forth. Um, now, are all the positive numbers in the world less than or equal to three? No. So this means that we're going to create two inequalities. My first inequality, I just dropped my absolute values. My second inequality, I drop my absolute values, I flip my inequality symbol, and I make it a negative. Alright, solving from here. I wind up with x is less than or equal to 1. And then the other one. I wind up with x is greater than or equal to a negative 1 half. So we got a graph in order to figure out if it's an and or an or. So I have a closed circle at 1 closed circle at negative one half. I want all the numbers greater than negative one half, but less than one. So this is an and inequality, which means I write my answer like this. X must be greater than or equal to negative one half, but less than or equal to one. All right, moving on to the next page here. I'm going to um, go over number nine with you. Now this one's a little tricky. This is a positive number. Are there any positive numbers that are greater than zero? Yes, all of them are. But we know that if x was negative six, that would equal zero and that this would make the statement false. So for this one, x just cannot be six. Otherwise, x can be anything else because all the other positive numbers in the world are greater than zero. So how we graph this on the number line is we draw a negative 6 and we put an open circle on negative 6 because x cannot be there. But x can be any other number in the world. So I shade the rest of my number line. All right, I'm going to have you try 10, 11, and 12. And then um, I'm going to have you save uh, the other ones for us. So go ahead, pause the video, try 10, 11, and 12, and then resume the your answers. Okay, here's your answer to number 10. It is an or compound inequality. And number 11 is no solution. And number 12 is all real numbers. We're now going to look at number 13. I'm going to start off by subtracting 6 from both sides. I have a 2 times the absolute value of x minus 9 is greater than 0. Dividing by 2 on both sides, I wind up with the absolute value of x minus 9 greater than 0. Now, remember, this side's going to yield a positive number. How many positive numbers are greater than 0? All of them. However, if x was 9, a 9 minus a 9 would give you the absolute value of 0, and the absolute value of 0 is not greater than 0. So x can be any number in the world except for 9. So x cannot be 9. That's how we write our answer, because that tells us that x can be anything other than 9. So on the number line, we draw an open circle at 9, and then we go ahead and we shade every other possible number on this number line. All right, looking at number 14, I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. Remember, when you divide by a negative number in an inequality, your inequality symbol flips around. So, how many positive numbers are less than negative 2? None of them. So, this is a no solution, absolute value inequality. That means that we do not graph. All right, looking at the last problem here, I'm going to start off by adding 3 to both sides. I get a negative 5 times the absolute value is greater than or equal to 0. I'm now going to divide by negative 5 on both sides. And remember, when you divide by a negative number and an inequality, that symbol flips around. Okay, so... How many positive numbers are less than zero? None. However, we can get this to equal zero by setting the 2x plus 2 equal to zero and solving this equation. Your only answer is negative 1, which we put a closed dot on the number line for that.